son is good. Amen. Amen. He beat me in church this morning. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And um, Pastor Clark and Lady Clark, um, um, Lady Clark's son, daughter, uh, bought some tickets for him to go to the Cowboy and say, yeah. Amen. 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 He called me and asked me, did I mind if he go? I said, no. Amen. When you t- 
talk when you ought to be praying. Look at that folk. Amen. When a person mistake, make a mistake, how do I help? I said, Jesus died for that too. Amen. We pray about the situation. We don't try to beat you up. <coughs> Amen. All right. So again, it's very, very important that we learn how to pray. Amen. And so in our lesson today, um, so when we pray, first of all, I want you to pray. When you learn how to pray, you pray for God's word, will to be done. Isn't that the Lord's prayer? Let thy will be done as it is in heaven. Amen. That's how we pray, right? And it's important that we pray because because, because, because you, I hope you hear testimony today that, you know, that, 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 that you're going to find out you can't do this stuff on your own. Amen. You're going to find out you can't do this stuff on your own. So Hezekiah uh, 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 was praying because the children of Israel was in trouble. Amen. And just like today, the day, the day, uh, all kinds of stuff is out there. All right? All kinds of stuff is out there. And the church needs to be praying about it. Amen. They need to be praying about it. Because God is not the one going to change stuff. You can try to change it all you want to, but you can't. Amen. Because God is the one that has to change things. Okay? Now, Hezekiah was a king. Amen. And over the southern kingdom of Judah. And, and, and things were happening because the northern kingdom always have tried to take over the southern kingdom. But you know why that would happen? Huh? Is it what that? Is that God's will? Why do you think the northern king would never take over the southern kingdom?
When you know God's will already. Right. When you're trying to change God's will. Right. Amen. You ain't no use of praying that. Oh, Amen. Because when God said don't do this, he meant don't do that. Ain't no use of you praying, oh, Lord, let me have it. Right. That's not his will. Amen. All right. So in our scripture today, 14a, and Hezekiah received a letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. Amen. And this is talking about, I may mispronounce his name wrong, Sennacherib of Assyria. Amen. Uh, sent this letter to uh, Hezekiah. All right. And Hezekiah, to tell them what all they were going to do, but Hezekiah, in 14b, went up into the house of the Lord and spread the letters before the Lord. Amen. In other words, that this is why Pastor Clark to put a prayer box up here. If you have a request, please put it in there so we can put these requests before the Lord. Because if God can't fix it, can't nobody fix it. Amen. What I say? If God can't fix it, can't nobody fix it. All right. So we might as well stop trying. Amen. If God can't fix it, can't nobody fix it. So he spread his letter uh, before the Lord. All right? And then in verse 15, he said, Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims. In other words, when you come to God, you've got to put him where he belongs. He's the God of Israel. Now, who is Israel? Jacob. <laughs> Jacob is Israel. All right. Potential deal. <laughs> Amen. Jacob. All right. He's the God of Jacob. God, the children of Israel is what called what? God's chosen people. Amen. Amen. God, God chose Israel. To be his special people. And then because they wouldn't do right. He opened it up unto who? Everybody. Who? Gentiles. The Gentiles. Which is what you say? Everybody. Because everybody that's not a Jew. Is a Gentile. So it was opened up to all of us. You find that in the book of Romans. Amen. Where, where, where the, the, he was talking about an olive tree. And the branches were broken off of the tree where the children of Israel. Okay? And when they were broken off, he grafted who? The Gentiles in. And then he told the Gentiles, don't be besides yourselves. If you, a fallen branch, can be grafted in, how much more shall the original branch be grafted in? Y'all know what grafting is, though. Yeah. Making something become a part of something. Amen? And so, so the children of Israel uh, are God's chosen people. All right? And so this is what he prayed. If you're going to pray, you got to put God where he belongs. Right. Okay? And he dwelleth between the cherubim. The cherubim were the angels, the symbol of the angels, in, in uh, the temple. And they were located at the altar. Okay? And which was the symbol of God in the church. Right? That's what the altar was. There was a symbol of God in the church. And so, so he prayed at the altar, okay, and he, this is what he prayed. He said, Thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdom of earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. In other words, when you pray, you got to recognize who God is, what he has done, and what he will do. And that's how you acknowledge God when you pray. A lot of times people feel like they got to pray, they call. And they, first of all, they don't come in the name of Jesus because God's when you pray, pray in the name of Jesus. They don't pray in the name of Jesus, but they expect God. Just, just sit there asking God to do this and do that and do that. And they don't really recognize and acknowledge him for who he is. And that's the problem. That's the problem. You don't recognize who he is, that he is in charge. I know it may not be working out like we think it ought to work out, but who's in charge? God is the one that's in charge. Because I promise you, every last one of us, look around. Every last one of us got some problems in our lives that we want God to fix. Every, <laughs> every one of us. Amen. But your faith got to be in God that He is, that He knows what's going on, and that He's all. 
already. You know, do you know the word of God is already written? He already got it worked out. Why are you trying to figure it out? God already got it worked out. And you got to know that God knows what he's doing. And sometimes it's because of our, us, our fault, that that uh, 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 things don't work out in our favor. Because we have not done all what God told us to do. All right? And if you do it, God is showing you that he's in charge. He's showing other folk that he's in charge. Because it's not always uh, uh, that we've done anything wrong. Amen? Amen. And so thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdom of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. God is the creator. And creation, and I like the way the author put this, creation indicates ownership. Creation, creation says that God owns us. He owns everything. Y'all know what a patent is? What's a patent? What's a patent? A patent is that you made it. It belongs to you. Okay? And nobody else can have it. Oh, now people will go and they will change it. Amen. But the change is there. <laughs> Amen. You said they stole. A lot of people have tried to steal people's patent and they got paid for it. But God owns everything. Okay? And when you recognize that and realize that and put it in perspective, you just do what God tells you to do. Because he owns everything. Amen? And so it implies ownership. Alright? 16. Lord, Bow down thine ear and hearts. Uh, open, Lord, thine eyes and see and hear the words of Sir Nitzrael, which has sent him to reproach uh, the living God. In other words, he's a man and he thinks that he's going to come and take over. But I want you to show him who is in charge. When people feel like they've got it all going on and a bag of chips and they know what they want to do, just ask God to show them who is in charge. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and I ought to put it like this. The reproach of the living God is to mock or talk or ridicule God. There is a scripture that says that harden not your hearts as they did in the day of what? Provocation. provocation. What is provocation? Provocation is how you provoke people. Y'all know what the word provoke means? Provocation is just a derivative of pro pro provoke. Provoke is like, it's like, it's like, I got this chip on my, knock it off. Y'all, y'all, I mean, y'all may not have done that in y'all day, but we did it. Y'all never did do that? Uh, you did? You did it a lot. You did, yeah, I'm telling you daring folks to mess with you or mess with your stuff. Hey, Amen. You provoking folks, and that's what people do about God. When they don't want to do what God tells them to do, they provoking him. They telling him, they, this king, Shemitarel, was, 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 was a man trying to say that he's in charge. Amen. I, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the bulldog of this house. <coughs> Amen. But God will show you that he is in charge. I promise you that. All right? I promise you that. And this is what about to happen to him. All right? And, 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 and he says, Surrender, Sir, Sir, no, Sir Nitzel did this through his officer that brought the letter. Amen? Right. And so there, there, uh, there can be no greater insult to God than thank you with all your choice. There can be no greater insult because God would not allow anyone to have his word. Glory. Glory. Amen. But 17 and 18 says, of the truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations 
and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands. Wood and stones, therefore, they have destroyed them. In other words, now that, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was a good thing to get rid of the, 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 the thing they thought they were gods. But it proved that the God that made my hands ain't nothing. They threw them in the fire and they burned them up. They ain't nothing. Amen? But he did that. So, so Nitzel did that trying to prove that he is in charge. Amen? Get rid of your stuff so I can prove that I'm, I'm the big bad wolf in this house. But no, no. God is always in charge. The Bible says all power. Both in heaven and earth is where? It's in God's hands. Amen? And, and they, the, the author, that's why I want y'all to get y'all a book because uh, in, the, in the book it says everyone worships something. Those who think that statement is to be untrue are worshiping themselves. They have placed themselves on the throne of their own heart. Today we may not see many people bowing Two hours of wood and stone, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a problem of idolatry, amen, in their life. The main problem is out of the heart, amen, where, uh, where are you most in danger of slipping into idolatry? In other words, what is your God? Is your God you? Is it your God your children? Is your God your money? Is your God your car? Is your God your house? What, what, what do you put before God? Amen. Just think about it. What do you put before your, what do you put before God? Is your insurance, your lights? <laughs> that place of the gold land would be now because you don't tell the truth. Amen. What is your God? What, is your God? what do you put before God? What do, what do you feel like you ought to do before you do what God tells you to do? Y'all hear that mouth? <laughs> Working on that God. <laughs> huh? Amen. Think about it. Amen. And, 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 and it's very Sinitarev thought that he could do that. But but we feel like, oh, that's Sinitarev. That's not me. Amen. But when you do those things and, and think for, for folks to know, this, this is me. <laughs> Amen. I know what I want. I ain't going to let nobody do me like that.
to everybody and still not make it. Amen. Because you got to realize that I can't make it if I don't have the love. Amen. Bottom line. All right? Uh, uh, and you can't be afraid uh, to come to God with your problems. And this is what Hezekiah did. He came to the Lord um, uh, uh, to the Lord with the problem because he realized that this man was trying to be God or take over, show his power and he put it before the Lord. He didn't try to prove that he wasn't who he was. He put it before the Lord. That's the problem that we have with folks. Folks try to prove, try to make somebody be, not be who they say they are. That's not our job. Our job is to show folks who really is in charge. And who is that? That's God. And Hezekiah prayed, amen, that God would prove himself and show himself, show himself strong, amen, among the people. And when you do that, people won't give you no credit. They give the credit to God. That's right. Why do we, why did I tell y'all we don't use the word pride here? Because pride indicates that I did. My wife and I went to see my grandson play football the other night up in Vivian. He's a pretty good player. But I ain't proud of him. I'm just thankful for him. Because God gave him the ability I did. <laughs> if God didn't want him to be here, he wouldn't be here. to grow again. 
That's just a sign. I'm going to show you. I got it all in charge. I got it all in control. And that's what God wants of us. He wants us to know that he got it all in control. Romans tells us, Romans 8 tells us all things. How many? How many? So the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, all things work together for the good, for them that what? And for them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen? Do we understand that? Okay. All right. And, okay, let me, let me move on. All right, 30. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root down in there and bear fruit up. Now, what is the remnant? What's the left over? And he's talking about the people. Amen. Cause, cause, cause everybody's not going to come out of the cave. That's right. During hard times, everybody's not going to come out of the cave. It doesn't mean that everybody got to pray. Somebody's going to be taken, uh, taken down, for lack of a better word. But those, that's bad, those, that, are, those that are left behind, they gonna, their roots going to go deep. And that fruit goes flourish up. That's what God said. Amen. It's not many folks. But those that are left, those of us that are here, we got to plant our roots deep so that our fruit can go up. So people will know that God is in charge. Amen. Amen. It's just like just like us. It wasn't many of us. Amen. What many of us, but we never miss a note on this building. Never miss a note. Even mom was wondering how we're going to do. She said, but I trust in God in you. And we went and got and God blessed us with this building. And it laid on both sides of the road. And somebody said, how y'all do that? He did it because there wasn't nobody but the hell of the law. God needed it. Because we were down there in a building that was a hundred and some years old, falling apart. Falling down. We left out of the church one day and came back in the beam and fell down in the middle of the church. As best as everywhere. And the preacher they had before me said, pay me before you pay the light me. And they didn't know how to have money to pay the light me. But it ain't a water but God. Amen. Ain't a water but God. You have to put your request, make your request known unto God. And when you pray right, I promise you, God will it be. Has it always been easy? No. <laughs> you saw some wife, see, see, she put the emphasis on the no. It has not always been easy. And it's still easy. Amen. Because it's a, it's a job when, 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 when you Oh, oh, pastor folks. That's right. Everybody got their own problem. And they forget about the pastor got problems. <laughs> Amen. And you can you get folks in the church and folks talk about them and then, you know, and run them off. Amen. That's the problem we have with uh, somebody who said they didn't care if the people left them not. Right. I said that's not going to work. <laughs> That's not going to work. Because we're in the soul winning business. We ain't in the business of judging folks about what they're doing. I wonder why. 
nobody ain't saying nothing about this.
God knows. All right. And and some some of the people uh, that I text, I've been texting for about four or five years. Haven't missed a day. Seven days a week. Amen. All right. And. <laughs> and one person was sort of boastful about what they were doing and what they did. All of a sudden, the roof came in, uh, fell in. <laughs> and when the roof fell in, hey, yeah. well, now they're doing stuff like they're supposed to do. They like, ain't got that all the way there, but they they get it. Amen? <laughs> and so, so, so God knows. You may be going along fine right now. You may feel like you ain't got no problem right now. But when the Lord intervenes, you're going to be able to call on him and say, Lord, thank you. Amen. That, that's going to be your prayer to him. Lord, I thank you. You didn't let me be overthrown. Oh, there were some people, as he said, the remnant, meaning that there were some people who didn't make it. But God gave you peace. Amen. And showed you that he is still in charge. Okay. So um, one way to do this, that, that the leader must be alert to, to such danger, to such a danger, and align the people's hope with God's desires as he's Hezekiah did. Do I need to read that again? The leader must be alert to such a danger and align the people's hope with God's desires, as Hezekiah did. And one way to do this is feel the Acts, Acts method of prayer. This acronym speaks to a four-stage prayer pattern. Number one is admiration, which means recognizing God for who he is. Ain't that what we told you? Recognizing God for who he is. Number two is confession, admitting more sins. Number three, thanksgiving. Expressing gratitude for God's blessing already received. God, what, do you know people sometimes when they go through something, they don't even realize that God has already blessed them? Right. Have been blessing them all the time anyway? And then it's just like it's just like when we don't get the people to love us, that we want to love us, what are the things people say? Don't nobody love me. They get down on themselves and say, don't nobody love me just because the person they want to love them don't love them. Yeah. And they forget about all the folks that's around them that love them, but they say they so, 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 so caught up that they can't even be thankful for the ones who do love them. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's all in the book here. I'm not making up nothing. Next is supplication. Requesting God's intervention or blessing. Amen. And that's the acronym ACT. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Okay? And it says, consider Hezekiah's prayer again. He didn't start with his plea for help. He started with adoration. Then he moved to recognition of sin. That a serious sin of blasphemy. We may think that confession involves only one's personal sin, but the Bible's witness to corporate confession as well. In other words, all of us, amen, must realize we all in this thing together. Okay? And so then thanksgiving and then supplication, requesting God to fix this thing for us. Now, uh, how did Hezekiah do it? That ought to be an example to all of us. That man ought to... How many... And not what? Faith. And not faith. The first thing anybody ought to do is pray. Right. Amen. We were talking about Wednesday night, and I told uh, Sister Shaq, the first thing you do, get up and pray. Then study your word. That's the first thing you do. Right. Amen. I don't know what the first thing you do is, but the first thing I do when I get out of bed, I roll out of bed on my knees.
Saul said on his way to Damascus, he said, Lord, what would I have me to do? Amen. He was going down to Damascus, amen, to, to, to persecute the church. But when he came to himself, and God knocked him from his feet, amen, the first thing he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? He said, they said who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus, whom you persecuted. He said, but Lord, what? Because I thought I was right. Lord, what would you have me to do? He said, God, you've been going that way. Go on down that way. We're going to a street called Straight. You got to get off the crooked road and get on the street called Straight. It's a man down there. Pray. And I'm not. Who's going to tell you the things you got to suffer for my sake? He's going to tell you what to do. The things you got to suffer for my sake. Amen. So if, if you in the Lord, that thing that's going to come against you, that you're going to have to realize and understand that only God can fix you. All right? And so start out with adoration. Amen. Start out with confession. Instead of looking out, start looking in. And making sure that you're right with God before you start trying to straighten somebody else out. Amen. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Amen. Oh, and do we have it? Do we, do we have it? Y'all were quiet over the day, but that's all right. Y'all don't want to talk to me today, but that's all right. Amen. Maybe y'all have gotten used to, 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 to not necessarily talking, but you got to talk. Hey, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Tim. Sound familiar, don't it? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, 
But you say you love it. But Jesus said, if I call me Lord, Lord, 